Welcome back to the Crochet Crowd, as well as my friends at joanne.com. I'm your host, Mikey. Today is week number one of the Fall Stitch Along for 2023. This is called the Open Flower Blanket, and this is using Bernat Blanket Perfect Phasing. The color that you're seeing here is fuchsia. You also have a choice of dark blue, and we also have dark orchid. These just take five balls in order to do it, and you can see how the yarn works out, and it's really quite amazing. So let me just zoom you out really quickly here, and the yarn will phase from one color all the way out to uh, the other color. So when you do this, you can either go from the center going on out, and then your next ball you'll go from the out going back in so that you'll get the perfect phasing as you can see going throughout this whole blanket, and it's a wonderful opportunity, and you can do that with all of your colors. The other sample we have is still the same pattern, and this here is using Bernat plush yarn that looks like this, and it is really quite squishy. It's a heavier yarn compared to Bernat blanket, and I love the way that this feels. Now, this particular project is exactly the same as I mentioned, but the gauge size is the same for both of them, but both of them require a different hook. So if you are using the Bernat blanket perfect phasing, you are going to use an eight millimeter size L slash 11 crochet hook, or for the Bernat plush version that you see right here, it is going to be a size N as in Nancy slash 15, and it's also a 10 millimeter for those that are in the metric system. So what we have here is a beautiful example of creativity and make sure that you do a gauge check. The gauge is seven single crochets and eight rows equals four inches. So without further ado, we're gonna head on into this pattern and I'm gonna show you the diagram because you're gonna see that this is a six row repeat once we get moving on this thing. So let's take a look at the diagram that's been provided for this week. And this diagram has a stitch key that's available with the pattern. I've just blown it up for tutorial purposes today. Everything that you need to know is here. What is unique about this is that there's a chainless starting double crochet, which I've never done before. And also I have never done working in the third loop of a double crochet before on the front and the back, and that'll be new for me as well. So when we look at the diagram here, this is a wonderful opportunity. This here from two all the way through seven is the repeat over and over and over until we get to a certain size. But we need to get ourselves started with the very first part of this. And we're gonna just create like a foundation area to begin. And those will be three rows. And then we're going to con uh, convert into this. So row number one, we are going to just get ourselves established so we can find out where all of these beautiful shells are going to be. And once that's done, it's pretty much easy, good to go. Now I did highlight the pattern. So we have to really watch a certain few of these stitches when we're doing this in order to keep the sequence. And that's just something that we're gonna highlight as we hit it. So I am going to use Bernat uh, plush yarn today. The color is called Sky Blue. And that's what I'm gonna be doing. And I'm gonna just duplicate what you see here. But of course, uh, if you wanna change the pattern, it's a multiples of nine plus 10. So you go nine, 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 and then add 10 at the end of the chain. However, if you change anything like that right now, it will change the yarn quantities and we will leave that for you to be able to figure out on your own. So without further ado, I'm going to start with my 10 millimeter size N is a Nancy crochet hook with my Bernat plush yarn. Let's begin. So let's begin by doing rows number one, two, and three. And so we're going to start our way across and that's where we're going to begin our journey. And then I'll bring you back with the diagram when we're ready for the body of this for row number one through the repeat section, just like this. Let's begin. With a slip knock on the hook, you're either going to chain loosely 82 or you're gonna do loosely the multiples of nine plus 10 as you just explained. So just nicely easy going. So one, two, three, four, and five, and go all the way to 82 if you're following the pattern exactly. So let's begin the row number one as we're starting off this blanket. You're gonna go second chain from the hook and it's gonna be right here. So the first and the second. And because this is thick yarn, I'm recommending that when you go into the second chain, make sure that there's two strands on top of the hook and one on the bottom. And this will have a nice tighter look to the beginning. And you're just going to single crochet. So you're just gonna move down your chain, it's right here. Again, making sure there's two on top and one on the bottom and single crochet. So just take your time and single crochet all the way across your chain and meet me back here in just a moment. And this is row number one. 
I'm all the way to my very last chain here on row number one. Let's turn your work and we're going to do two and three and I'll have you do that on your own, but let me explain it first. Rows two and three are both gonna be the same as just single crochet. Just chain up one and apply one single crochet in the first one and one single crochet in all of them all the way to the end. At the end of your work there, just turn again and just do the same thing for row number three. And I'm gonna pick you up at the end of row number three and we're gonna start the body of the blanket after that. So please do these two rows, number two and three. I'm now at the end of row number three and we're gonna turn and work and we're gonna start the body of it and go to row number one. Let me go back to the diagram and show you what's up next. We're gonna to go to the diagram and we are currently going to be right here. And this is called the chainless starting double crochet, which I've never done before. And I'm gonna explain it to you slowly a few times and then we're gonna get moving on this thing. And so every time you hit that, we are going to just do it, but I'm only gonna show it to one time in a slow motion format. So we're gonna have five double crochets complete and that includes that chainless double crochet. So there'll be five. And then you're going to skip two stitches, chain two, and single crochet in the next, chain four, skip two, and single crochet in the next, skip two, chain two, and then double crochet in the next. And you're going to repeat this over and over. Just remember you're always skipping two single crochets when you're on this particular row, which makes it easier to remember. When you get back to the other side here, the last five will always be a five stitches. And in this case, it'll be five double crochets. And if you look at the diagram going up, you always see that there's five on the edge on both sides. Let's begin row number one. Let's begin row number one with the chainless double crochet. And so I will show it to you a few times. So you wanna pull the loop up high enough that it equals the height of a double crochet. If you're not sure of the height, just double crochet a few times and then you can see what the height is and that'll help you. I want you to push the hook so it's facing in this configuration right here. And I want you to use your point your finger and I want you to really push down on this thing right here. Rotate this hook towards you so that this is coming towards you so that you can see it and your finger is creating a gap space. You're going to look for the very first stitch which will be right where my thumb is where this loop is coming out of and just go in Noticing I'm not lifting up that pointer finger, I'm just holding it firm, and I'm going to wrap the yarn and pull through, and then wrap the yarn and pull through the two loops that you see, one and two, and therefore you can let it go at this point and just pull through the final two. Okay, so let me show you again. If this is hard for you, it's okay. You'll get through it. So pull up what you think the height is, Okay, and then I want you to push down here, noticing the orientation of the hook because it's easier, and, and rotate around so this is coming towards you, and then just push the head into the stitch. Yarn over, pull through, pull through these two loops. You can let it go and then pull through the final. I'm gonna show you one more time. Just keep practicing and just put me on pause if you need to practice. So pull up, turn the hook, push hard, wrap. So you're pushing so it doesn't unspin. Go into the stitch. Yarn over, pull through, and pull through the first two loops. You can let it go and pull through the final two. And that is your chainless starting double crochet. So now I'm gonna move on. So the next four stitches will each be a regular double crochet. So the reason for that chainless double crochet is that it makes the edge and it doesn't create a space that you typically see with double crochet. So it's actually a really good tip to know. I can see myself using that in the future. So with the standing and these four, that gives you the five, so therefore you have your edge. So now we're gonna bounce our way all the way across. So we're gonna chain two to begin, and you're going to skip two and single crochet into the next. So the third one away. Chain, chain four, one, two, 
three, four, and skip two and single crochet in the next. This here is the foundation of a shell that you'll have in the future. So chain two, skip two, and double crochet the third one away. So here is the housing for your shell. So let's restart again. So chain two, skip two, single crochet in the next, chain four, one, two, three, four, skip only two and single crochet in the next, chain two, skip two and double crochet in the next. And now there's another shell work. So you're just gonna keep repeating that until you get close to the other side. So let's go again. So chain two, skip two, single crochet in the next, chain four, skip two, single crochet in the next, and then chain two. So you would just double crochet the third one away if you're going to repeat this over and over to get to the other side. If you're ready for the other side, which is where I am, just put me on pause if you're not ready for it, but for other people that are gonna continue, here we go. We're gonna skip the, the next two, we're, and we're gonna double crochet in the last five stitches that you have. So because I did a multiple of nine plus 10, this equals exactly what it should. Okay, and the 82 works as well when you started that in the very beginning. So here is your edge on the other side with your five double crochets, and now you have everything already lined up for you to start. And row number two through seven is the repeat throughout the whole body. So let's turn our work and pull up our diagram and let's begin to look. So number two, we're going to chain up one and we're going to apply five single crochets in a row on top of these doubles. You're going to chain one and then put nine double crochet into this chain four space. And then you need to chain one, single crochet in the top of that double, chain one, and then put another nine into the next chain four space. And you're gonna do that over and over. My key tip is don't forget to do that chain one that is before and after one of these shells. When you get to the other side, you'll have to chain one before you get there and the last five will be a single crochet in each. Let's do row number two. Let's do row number two. You're going to chain one and apply one single crochet in each of the next five. So start with the first one. Maybe we can count those together so we can go one, two, three, four, and five. This is a very easy row, by the way. So this is row number two, which is part of the repeat. Before you begin, into this chain four space, so you're skipping this space, go to this one, chain one first, and apply nine double crochets right into the space. I'll count the first one with you, and then I'm gonna count quietly the rest of them. So we're gonna start by double crocheting nine times. So we have one, two, three, four, Five, six, seven, eight, and nine. If you're confident on your counting, then just go ahead, but you may want to double check just to make sure, just to get it right. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Remember, you need to chain one after the last one, and then you're going to hit this double crochet right here, and you are going to single crochet in there. So you're going to start another one of these, so chain one before you start, and then put in another nine double crochets into this chain four space, so you're skipping this and going right here, and we're gonna do nine, and I'm gonna count it quietly.
there's nine. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Don't forget to chain one after it and come to your next double crochet, which is right here. And you're going to single crochet and you're just gonna keep doing this all the way across in those chain four spaces. So I'm coming up to my last one here. And so I'll chain one before I start and again, do another nine and I'll do it quietly. Once you get your last nine in here, chain one. And if you're ready for the edge, this is what you'll do. The last five here, which includes that chainless double crochet, is each a single crochet. So you can count it to yourself if you want to. So one, two, three, four, and five is the last one. Perfect. So this is what it will look like beautiful. We're going to turn to work and move to row number three. And this is when the game plan changes. In row number three, we're currently right here. We're going to do a chainless double crochet, which I'm just going to go in reg regular speed. And then we're going to then double crochet just the next three into the regular stitch. And this one here, we're going to use a back loop only. Now, do you see that there is a chevron that is turned upside down like so. If you look at the stitch key, it says that this was worked in the third loop of the back of the work. So what we're going to do is we're going to do the third loop of this double crochet. And each one of the ones in the shell here, the nine, are all working in the same spot in behind. And once I show you where that is, which I'll take my time, you're going to see that. We're also going to be dealing with going up and down. So this provides more space going in the peak and this is going to decrease. So when we do a decrease stitch, we're going to use the back uh, loop here. It's also called the back bar. And then you're gonna use the back loop of the single crochet because there is no bar for a single crochet. And then the next one here, there's going to be the back bar here and it's a three together double crochet using the back bar. And so we just have to go up and down. So you're going to notice is that there will be three together, two together, and one by itself. And then on the opposite side, it's one by itself, two together, and then three together sweeps like that. Okay, so if it's easy to remember going in the up and down motion. Let's begin and start row number three. Just take your time, it's not a race. Let's begin row number three. It's a chainless double cro starting double crochet. So just do what you need to do in order to make it work. <laughs> so hopefully you've been practicing a little bit and you get it done. So it makes it thicker and so therefore you don't end up with a gap in the space. You don't see a gap below because it doesn't exist because of this. So now what we have is that the next three only are gonna be a regular double crochet. So we have one, two, and three. But you're noticing, wait, there's another one right here. This is going to be a back loop double crochet. So in the world of crochet, there's always two strands for a full stitch. The strand that's closest to you is a front loop, and the other strand away from you is the back loop, and the back loop is where you wanna go. So you're gonna double crochet in the back loop. Okay, so it creates this line, which is what you're looking for. So all the rest now here are going to be using the back bar or the back loop of double crochet. And so how we determine that is that when you look at this, the stitch work, you have the regular two stitches on top. The third loop or the back loop is the actual turning it over even further and looking for it and it's right here. Do you see that? So if you're looking for the next one, it's right here. Once you see it, it's hard to unsee. And once you get it, it just works out really quite beautifully in order to do that. 
Okay, so now that we know where that stitch is, we are going to start off by putting a two together using the first two of these right here. And so we're gonna be using the third loop at the back of the work. So just looking, and so you got the top, and it's right here in the back. Now, I've just had a massive outtake, so mine are a little bit more exaggerated than yours will be. So you just have to use the first one there, pull through, and then do the next one. So it's a two together, double crochet. Okay, so you see three loops, pull through all three. We're now going to, the next two will be one double crochet by itself. So again, just looking at the tops and keep on going to the third loop in behind. So there'll be one by itself and then the next one. Now we're gonna head to the middle of this and how we do that is that we chain two and again, using the third loop in behind, you are going to single crochet. Now you're going to chain two and now we're gonna sweep down and back up and keep doing that all the way to the other side. So the first one out will always be, so just the first one after the middle is going to be a double crochet by itself. The next two will be a two together double crochet. And I'm assuming that you know it's the back, it's the third loop in the back side at this point. It's the whole thing all the way until you get to the next edge. So it'll be a two together there. And now this one is gonna be sweeping around and gonna pick up the last one of this pedal, the back loop of the single, and then the third loop on the back of the first one of this pedal. So we just reach in behind and grab the first one, pull through, pull through two and hold. You're gonna do the back loop of this single. So there's no third loop for single. That's why that's on the back loop of that one. And now we come to the first one of the pedal and again, the back loop here, the third is in that one. Okay, so the third one and pull through all three. And so that's sweeped around and picked up everything. Now we're gonna head back up, it's always the same. And so it's gonna be two together, double crochet. And then it's gonna be one double crochet on its own by itself. Now we're ready for the top, chain two, and single crochet again in the third loop. Chain two, and so the down is always gonna be the same. The next one out is going to be a double crochet by itself. And then the next two are a double crochet, two together. Okay, once you see the three loops, pull through. And now the next one is gonna sweep, pick up the last one of this, the single, and then the first one on the other side. Make sure it's the back loop of the single. And then going back to the third loop on the next pedal. So this is keeping the top edge of that last row all exposed like this. So we're gonna go up. So what is gonna be the next two? It's gonna be a double crochet two together. So those stitches are, two stitches are used as one. And then we have one double crochet by itself. And then this is the middle, so chain two and single on the third loop. And then chain two. Now you're just gonna go up and down all the way across like this, and it will create these deep ridges. But when you're ready for the final coming down, it's slightly different, and then the final edge. So if you're not ready for that, just put me on pause and just keep repeating what I just showed you over and over. And then when you're on your last one coming down, then you'll finish it the way I'm about to show you. So let's keep on going. 
So the next two in a row will just be, after you've done your chain two, will just be a double crochet by itself. So there's two double crochets in a row. And the very final two of this petal will be a two together double crochet. And now we're ready for the edge. So the first one here is going to be using just the back loop of the first single crochet for a double crochet that you see. So it'll be a double crochet in the back loop only. And then we're gonna switch back to the regular stitches. So just going into the regular stitch for the last four along the edge. Okay, so you have these beautiful deep ridges. You have your peaks with the spaces which you need. And this is what this row was. And we're moving on to row number four in a moment. So please turn your work and let's get ready for that. In row number four, you're gonna notice is that the last row may have been a little tough for you. It's the only time you have to do that. So whenever you're on a three, it's on the back third loop of the double crochet, but you're not gonna have to do that anymore until you get back to a row three in the future. And these ones here are done on the front third loop on the front side, and they are a lot easier to find. Okay, so if you're feeling like this was a little tough for you, you only have to do it one time within the sequence of the repeat. So in row number four, we're gonna chain up one and we're going to put in five half double crochets in a row, and then we're gonna chain two and I, I call them lonely. You can call them anything you want, but I find that these guys are lonely. They're sitting by themselves. So you're gonna single crochet into the last one before the chain two space, and then chain two, double crochet into the single, chain two, and then go into the other one here on the other side. And they're kind of sitting there all lonely by themselves. That's just the way I, I visualize it for myself. You're then going to chain four, and then go into this one before the chain two, the lonely one, and single crochet, chain two, and double crochet into the single. And you're just gonna repeat this. So row number four here is a really quick row. So you're going to notice is that row number four and also seven are really quick to go across. The other two just require a little bit more attention. Let's begin row number four, and don't forget on the end, it's five half double crochets in a row. So let's begin number four. Let's begin number four, just a chain one. It doesn't count as anything. And the first five in a row will be each a half double crochet. Okay, so let's get ready now. We're gonna chain two, and you're looking for the double crochet before the chain space. So it's this lonely one right here. <laughs> My mom would explain things to me in those kind of terms, so I remember. So now you're gonna chain two, and you're going to double crochet into the single that is in the top of the peak that you see below. And then you chain two, and look for the next double crochet that's lonely by itself, after the chain two space and the top is right here. Single crochet there. So we're now going to create, you know how we created these spaces? We're gonna create it right here now. So it's offset so that it does like a honeycomb effect when you're looking at the blanket as a whole. So you're going to chain four and look for the one before the next space right here. So you're skipping over the three and you're just going to single crochet there. So this is gonna create that chain four space which you need in the future. Chain two, and now you're gonna double crochet into the next single. This is the top of the last one that you did. Chain two, look for the next double that's lonely by itself after the space, single crochet. Chain four, one, two, three, four, skipping three, but just look for the one that's just before the space, if it makes it easier for you, and single crochet, and keep doing this across. So chain two, double crochet into the next single, chain three, 
chain two. Look for the next one that's after this next space, the lonely one. And you keep doing this all the way across and I'm gonna show you how to finish in just a second. So if you're not ready for that, just put me on pause. So for those that are ready to finish, you're going to just chain two from this point and you were going to look for the final five that you have. Okay, so right here, and you were just going to half double crochet the final five. So a nice easy row, right? So one, two, three, four, and this is the fifth one right here. And that completes that. And now you have another layer here to get ready to do more shells that will end up here and here and etc. Please do this and we're going to move on to round number five after we turn our work in just a moment. <laughs> in row number five, we're right here and we're going to do that chainless double crochet to start. And then the next four will each be a double crochet. This chain two space that just is after is gonna have four double crochets, chain one, and then you're going to single in the top of this double. You're going to chain one, and then it's just like you were doing before, you put your nine double crochets into this chain four space. Don't forget to chain one after it, and then you'll do a single crochet right here into this double. And then chain one, and then put nine into the next chain four space and make sure you chain one after it. And when we get to the other side here, we chain one and then put four into the chain two space and then finish it off with five double crochets in a row at the end. Let's try this for row number five. Okay, let's begin. We're going to do the chainless double crochet. There we go. That's taken me a bit of practice, just so you know. So now we have the next four in a row will each be a double crochet. So we have one, two, three, and four. So with that chainless and the four, it gives you the five, which is what you needed. Let's move along. The next chain two space right here is gonna have four, double crochets in there. So I'll count these with you. So one, two, three, and four. Followed by a chain one, and you're looking for the next double crochet. It's after this space, and it's right here, and you're going to single crochet there. And now it's gonna be like it was down here. So you chain one and look for the next big chain four space. It's second over and you're going to do nine there. I'll count it quietly in my brain <laughs> if I only had one. So let's go. So we'll do nine. So, so one, If you're confident that it was nine, then keep on going. I'm gonna double check. And then chain one. So if I was by myself, I wouldn't double check because I believe in myself, but because this is a tutorial, I'm counting because I don't wanna refilm. <laughs> so I'm looking for the next double crochet here. So it's after this next space and I'm gonna single there. And then I'm gonna keep making these going across. So just chain one and look for the next chain four space and do another nine. So I got my nine in there. So I don't forget to chain one. 
and you keep doing that all the way across. Don't forget the next single is in the double right here. It's after the space. And when you're ready for the very final edge, if you're not, just keep, just put me on pause. But if you're ready for that chain one and in this space before the edge, this chain two space is going to be four double crochet. So I'll count these. So we have one, two, three, and four. And then you have your five stitches that are left and you're going to just apply one double crochet into those last five. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. Okay, so this is what this row did really quite fun and fabulous. We are looking at the right side of the work, so the good side if you were to display it. And so the next row, we're gonna be changing the story again and doing double crochet on the third loop on the front side, which is not a hard thing. So let's just turn our work and let's go back to the diagram. So in row number six, we're about to start and we're going to chain up one and then we're gonna do four single crochets in a row. And then the, the fifth one is going to be on the front loop. Okay, it's gonna be on the third loop in the front. And once I show you where that is, it gets a lot easier. So all of these will be exactly what you know that you did here, but you're working on the front loops only. So the front third loop. And what this is gonna do is it's gonna turn the last row so that it's flipped out away from you because you're looking at the back side of the work at this moment on this row. So we're going to go up and down in the same motion we did before. We're just using a different area of the double crochet. You can let me know in the comments, have you done this stitch before? For me, it was brand new. Just like the middle, we are going to use only the front loops. Last time we did the back loops, but because we're working on this side, we need to make sure that we're focusing on that. And then when you get over to the other side here, the first single crochet out um, will be on the, the third loop here in the front, and then the rest of the four will be in the regular stitches. Let's give it a try. This one is not so hard, you'll see. Let's start row number six. Chain up one, and let's just do the four single crochets in a row because that's what we already know. So we have one, two, three, and four. Now, in crochet, we had the two stitches at the top like I showed you before, but on this side, this here is the front third loop. So looking at the two in the top, this is the third on the front side. And if you turn it over, that is the third on the back. But we only wanna focus on the front side, so it's right in front of our faces. We just gotta use it. So do you see it? It's right here. It's like one layer down. So think about it like a two-story house. It's the first story of the house. So when we start the next single crochet, we're gonna use that stitch and that will complete, or that part there, and we're going to get started. Once you get the first one, I find the rest of them are very easy to grab. Okay, so that was the fifth one using the third loop on the front side. So let's go on up on this side here, and we are going to chain two. And we're gonna have the next one as one double crochet by itself. And I'm just gonna assume that you know it's the, the third loop in the front. But did you see that? I don't have to turn it, I don't have to do anything, I just gotta slip underneath it. The next two will be used as a two together double crochet. So I kinda using my thumb just to kinda stabilize it and push it onto the needle, or to the hook. And once I see my three loops, I'm done, pull through all three and it's good to go. Like we did before, we're gonna pick up the last one of this petal. We're gonna pick up just the front loop of this and then continue again on this side for the three together that we know about. So we're going to yarn over, coming into this one, pull through and hold it. Do just the front loop only of the single. And then right here on the other side. So these ones are a lot easier to see, right? Let me know in the comments how you feel about that because I think you might agree with me. Once you see the four, pull through all four. 
so this is causing the ridge to happen on the other side and so you can see this is the ridges that you're looking at when the afghan's being opened up and you're seeing it so the up and down motion is always going to be the same moving forward so the next one here you can see it is available so those will be a two together double crochet And the next one is going to be that one lonely one by itself, which you'll see in the future. So it's one double crochet by itself. And now we're at the top. So the top, how we're going to do it, chain two. And you are going to single crochet again on the third loop on the front. Chain two. And then we come down this side. So we're gonna start with the one double crochet by itself. Hopefully you can start to see the repeating of this. Okay, the next two will be a two together, double crochet. I love this yarn, by the way. I don't think I said that in this tutorial yet, but I love this yarn. I like the way it feels on my hands. So pull through the three. Okay, so now we're going to pick up the three. So it's the last one of this pedal, it's the front loop of the single, and then it's the first one of this pedal. Okay, and now you see the three, pull through all three. And get excited, turn it over, and you can see all of your amazing stitch work is happening on the other side. So now let's go up again. So the first two out are going to be a two together, double crochet. The next one is that lonely double crochet by itself. So I wasn't a smart kid growing up and my mom really showed me key elements of way to learn and to remember so I say stuff like that and it's helped it served me well as an adult. Okay so chain two and single crochet into the next one. This is the middle and you're going to keep going up and down the same motion going across. So let's go down again. So the first one is by itself. Okay, the next two are two together. And now the next three are a three together. So it's this one, the last one of this pedal, it's a single here in the front loop and the first one of this one right here of the group of four. Now, if you're not ready for the edge, then just put me on pause and keep repeating that over and over. And if you're ready for the edge on how to finish, we're gonna come up on this side here and the next two are two together. Okay, the next one is one by itself. That's still in that group of four, just so you know. and then chain two. And the first one of the grouping of five is still gonna be on the, the front loop here. That's the third loop in the front. So it's just gonna be a single crochet in the third loop in the front. And then the other four are just a single crochet in the regular stitch work. So you really can't see your work on this row, but this row is actually a lot easier to do than the other ones I, I feel in my opinion. So when you turn it around, you can see 
you have that amazing stitch work that is being showcased within this afghan. So we're now going to turn our work as I just did, and we're gonna begin the seventh row, which is the final of the repeat. In the seventh row, we're gonna start right here. We're gonna do that chainless double crochet, and then you're going to do then four double crochets in a row. So you have that grouping of five. You're going to chain two, and you're going to use the first double crochet that's after the space, and just single crochet, chain four, and then look for the one just before this one. It's the lonely one by itself, and it's just a single crochet, chain two, and then double crochet into the middle of the single, and then keep repeating that over and over and over until you get to the end. And of course, the last five will be on its own. So this here is like reestablishing what we did in row number one. The only difference now is that we are working with the wave going up and down, where when we did this the first time, there was no wave because it was flat. Let's begin row number seven. Row number seven, let's do that chainless double crochet that you love. <laughs> Let me know how you're feeling about that. Um, I think it's a neat technique. And it does a nice thick um, beginning so you don't end up with a gapping space. So we're going to double crochet the next four in a row. So we have one, two, three, and four. And now let's begin to make those spaces that we love. So we're going to chain two and look for the double crochet after the space here, which is right here. You're going to single there and then you're going to chain four to jump. So one, two, three, and four, and look for the lonely double crochet before the next space over here. Okay, so you're skipping technically three. Chain two and double crochet into this single here that's at the top of the last circle below. Chain two and look for the first double crochet after the space. So it's right here. So single crochet, chain four, skip three, but it's just easier to look for the double crochet before this major space right here. Single crochet there, chain two, double into the next single, chain two. Okay, single into the first double after the space, chain four, Okay, and then look for the lonely one just before the space. So you're skipping technically three, single crochet there. And then if you're if not ready for the edge, just put me on pause. And for those that are ready for that, you're just gonna chain two at this moment. And then you were just going to double crochet the final five in a row. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. And that's what this looks like. And now you have yourself established because you're going to see, if you go back to row number two now for the repeat, you're gonna be filling this in that you see exactly in the same spots. And this will work out beautifully as you're seeing And these ridges are just absolutely just fantastic. So let's go back to the pattern right now. So what we need to do now is to repeat rows number two through seven. So you just go back to number two and you do two through seven until the blanket is measuring a total of 48 inches or 122 centimeters. Once you have that height done, you're ready for the next row, which will start up here. And what we need to do is that we need to fill in the spaces that are open. So in the eighth row, even though it's showing here, this is the same as row number two, and they do it just to show you the indication on how things get repeated. So when you finish, you have to end on a seventh row, and they're putting the seventh row here just to show you how the last three rows are going to go. So what we have to do is pay attention to the most is the next row right here to make sure we get the right amount of stitches within the spaces that are in there and then the next two are just single crochets. So after you have your 48 inches done you're going to be ready for the next row which is where I'm going to head you next. So let's begin the next row. You're going to put in a single crochet into the first five 
And in this chain two space, there's only gonna be one single crochet. There's gonna be one single crochet in this single crochet. And then there's gonna be four into this space. One single crochet into this, one single crochet into the chain two, one single crochet into the double, one single crochet into the chain two, one single crochet in the single, and then four. So what we're doing is we're getting ourselves to be equal so that we have a nice, consistent way of finishing. Let's begin this row. So if you're ready to finish this, the next three rows are the final, so just chain up one and single crochet the first five that you can see. So we have one, two, three, four, and five. So this chain two space, just make it one single crochet into the space itself and then single into the next single. This chain four space is going to be four single crochets. So one, two, three, and four. And then single into the next single. This is another chain two space, so only put in one single crochet and then single into the double. So you're just gonna keep repeating that across. So this is a chain two space, so there's only one single, one single into the next, And then in this chain four space, there's gonna be four single crochets. Single into the next single. Sing one single into the next chain two space. Single into the next double. Single into the chain two space. Single into the single. And then four singles into the chain four. So one, two, three, and four. Single into the single, one single into the chain two space, and keep repeating that over and over. And then on the very final five, it's just one single crochet in the last five. So one, two, three, four, and the fifth one is right there. That's that chainless double crochet. So this is the ending of this. And so the next two rows are just single crochet each and let's turn our work and do it. So the next two rows of the final is just chain one and just apply one single crochet in each stitch all the way to the other side. Turn your work, chain one and one single crochet in each stitch all the way to the other side. So please do this and I'll be back after those two rows are done and I'm gonna show you another tip that will be really quite handy for you. I'll be right back. So I'm now at the end. Anytime you have the loose ends with thick yarn like this, it's better to get another piece of yarn that is looking close to the same color. I'm just using Karen uh, Simply Soft here in order to do it, and I'm creating a, uh, a slip knot on the one side of the strand. So I'm going to use this, and I wanna keep this long enough so I can throw this through a tapestry needle as well. So when you cut your yarn, you want to cut it long enough that you can weave it in. The problem is, is that when you weave in yarn like this, it can actually fall out because there's nothing to grab onto. It's not like it's a ply of yarn. So you wanna just weave it through the stitch work on the edge. But I'm looking at the back side of the work right now because you can tell the ridges are not visible. And I just wanna coming across just a few of the stitches along the edge. And when I do this, I don't wanna pull on it to the point where it's changing the shape of the project and end up back here on the back of the project. What I'm going to do is that I'm going to put this yarn through a piece of it. Okay, this is like the core of the yarn. And I'm gonna just go through it and I'm going to go through the slip knot here and I'm just going to grab onto it. If you use thread, thread has the potential to splice yarn, but if you use yarn just like this, it's a lot it's a lot thicker and it will hold onto it quite nicely. And what I want to do is that I want to drag this through. So I'm just going to cut this down even further. And I'm gonna take my needle and I'm just gonna drag it through. Okay, so I'm just gonna drag this yarn through. 
and it's already attached to that core, so it's gonna pull through. Okay, that's exactly what I want it to, to look like. And so make sure when you pull the first time, it doesn't change the shape and then go through a different area. So I'm using a, a tapestry needle that is thin so I can get through there. So I'm going back in the other direction and I'm gonna go back into this core again in a different spot and go back through. And then I'm gonna go back again and back through again one last time. And so this loose end can never weed its way out because this other yarn that I'm using is going through. Now, I didn't tell you this, but when I was going through, I wasn't going all the way through. I'm just staying with inside the stitch work itself. And if you want to have this tie into a little knot, you can, as long as the colors are pretty close, it's gonna be pretty much invisible. And then just weave in your ends. So anytime you have a loose end, I'd recommend that this is your plan of action. Okay, so now that that's in, I still have my long strand to worry about. And so the long strand that was on the edge, it's already been secured with a slip knot. So I'm not worried about that at all. But what I'm just gonna do is just take this and just weave it through just to hide it inside. Like that. And therefore, if you want to weave it in, you can, again, you can, but it is a slip knot, so it won't come out. And therefore, the other side is completely woven in and it will not fall out on you. So that's my tip for you today. So this is where I leave you this week and please enjoy your stitch journey. Let us know how you're doing. Uh, just uh, check in on our Facebook group and give us some updates on how you're doing. Maybe people can encourage you just in case you're feeling a little bit down about your project. Uh, but ultimately we want to be part of your journey and give you a hand and look how amazing this can be. So we'll see you on week number two as we finish it off and I'll be back next week to finish. See ya.